Coming up today, we finally have something to celebrate in 2021. We are carried away with the news that Sex in the City is coming back to TV for real this time. But how will they deal with Samantha? Then, why is everyone talking about Shondaland's new Netflix show, Bridgerton? Well, I tried it over the weekend, and I'll tell you my thoughts. And we asked, and you answered. You're showing us your weekend, just in time to make us all smile on this Monday. Here we go. Let's make it a good day. Good, a good day. Good morning, everybody. We are live from our studios in the Twin Cities. Welcome to the Jason Show. Oh, hi, Grandma. Our audience member doing the signs. I love it already. Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm Jace. Please join me in saying hello to my sidekick sister from another mister. If we were in the mystery machine, she would be my Daphne. It's Kendall Mark, everybody. Good morning. Thank you. Hello. How are you doing, lovely? Good. I, I got the reference. Purple and the yes, Daphne. And the I Daphne. Great. Well, uh, let's. Uh, she has the sign up. Let's just get right to our audience, <laughs> our virtual audience. I don't want to make her wait anymore. Say hello to Becky and Emily. Emily, I'll start with you. Let's say hello. Is it for your grandma, sweetheart? Yeah, it's for my grandma. She's uh, one of the few people I knew would be available right now. So I called her and told her to turn on the TV. Oh, cute. What's your grandma's name, sweetie? Leah. Hi, Leah. Hi, Grandma Leah. You, yeah, Emily, you know me. I love a grandma. I love, I was incredibly close to my grandmother. So, hi, Grandma oh. Leah. Welcome to TV. Your name's being said on the television. Well, I know. <laughs> Emily, where are you zooming in from? Um, well, Minneapolis. Uh, we, my husband and I live in North Minneapolis. Oh, fantastic. I'm right down the road there. I'm in the North Loop. Uh, let's say hi to Becky. Hi, Becky. Hi. Hi, sweetheart. Where are you zooming in from? Um, Spooner, Wisconsin. Oh, where? Okay, where is that exactly? Is it uh, a little? We're about an hour right south of Duluth. Oh, perfect. Mm -hmm. Beautiful Spooner. Well, thank you guys for being here. We'll be checking in with the ladies all throughout the hour. How was your weekend? Good. I uh, Spooner, Wisconsin. Ironically, I have a lot of a couple friends with cabins around that area. Beautiful oh, nice. area. So weekend was good. Yeah. Quiet. How was yours? Great. Um, uh, I did a lot. Uh, but I started dreading today. So like yesterday, I already started dreading today and it's your fault. Okay, well, honestly, the... Jason, please tell me, how is it my fault that you've been dreading Monday? Well, thank you for asking, Kendall, mm -hmm. uh, because you scheduled me for an outdoor activity this, e uh, this, this afternoon and you know I'm an outdoorsy kind of guy. Yeah, super outdoorsy. He loves the outdoors, everyone. Yeah. Sign him up for all the outdoorsy cold things. Yeah, tell, uh, why don't you tell uh, the audience what, what you are having me do today right after the show. Well, an activity I think a lot of us think is fun, your cross-country skiing at Three Rivers Park District. No, 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 I shan't be doing that, but I'm going to learn. This is for our fish out of water segment. Mm -hmm. Kendall helped schedule a lot of those. She think, thought it would be funny to put me, I have my ski pants on. Actually, Jeff thought it'd be funny. That's very true. <laughs> I, I have ski pants that I bought a few years ago for the show. Mm -hmm. I, I have my nuclear winter coat mm -hmm. that I got at Columbia. It's like 80 layers thick. Mm -hmm. But you know what I forgot? Gloves. Can I ask a question? Anything. It's yeah, Please, we have a 45, 50 minutes to fill. Thank you. Those pants that you bought for the show, have they been worn since you wore them a few years ago for the show? That's what I thought. Is it, should we go at them with a hot dish? Mm -hmm. No, I haven't worn them. They had done, no, it, all kidding aside, I went to find them last night before yeah. I went to bed, buried deep, <laughs> deep in a drawer I never go into. Did you curse yourself trying to find them? Yeah, I was I like, no, I found them right away, but no, I oh. haven't used them since. <laughs> and I bought them. I went, if you have been a longtime viewer of the show, about four years ago, I went downhill skiing for the first time with producer Carl. Mm -hmm. uh, and that didn't go well. Oh. So I, I have loftier goals for cross country because it's just flat, right? Well, mostly. No, wait a minute. Nobody told me. No, you don't go like this. 
Well, I'm not doing hills. I'm just telling you. I didn't do this. Um, executive producer Jeff yeah. did this. I went. Mm. I'm gonna bring in assistant Q because Q was on. That's the, not fair. Well, no, I'll have him do it. He was on the Green Bay. He's a professional skier. He was a college athlete. I know. I'll pay him to do it for me. You can't do that. It's. I mean, I think the show is Jason. I think <sighs> I could. You know. Ugh. No, I won't. I'm excited. You'll see that in a future episode. Let's get started, everybody. It's time for the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. Let's get started. Okay. Honest, I wanted to do an hour-long special on this, but I was denied. So we'll just do it here. Okay. Big news for Sex and the City fans. After years of begging and pleading and begging, the show is coming back. Variety has confirmed Sarah Jessica Parker, Cynthia Nixon, and Kristen Davis will be back for the show. It's not going to be called Sex in the City, though. It's going to be called And Just Like That. Kim Cattrall, if you noticed, I didn't say her name because she ain't coming back. The new show will follow Carrie Charlotte Miranda as they navigate love and friendship in their 50s. The series will consist of 10 half-hour episodes, and it won't be on regular HBO. It's being made for HBO Max the struggling streaming service. Struggling no more. Yeah. <laughs> it's struggling. It was str it's struggling. Jeff's going like this. No, it's not. No. It, it was struggling before Wonder Woman. It was. Well, now I'm saying like they're going people are going to be signing up left and right to watch this. I'm so excited. The irony of this was we uh, had a lazy day yesterday and we were doing a Sex in the City marathon and as I was watching an episode from season 6, mm -hmm. I refreshed my internet and the tweet from Cynthia Nixon came over my phone, and I'm like, what is this? What? And Because the trailer is just like um, pictures of New York, and I thought, no, no, and I screamed out loud, I said a few cuss words, mm -hmm. and then uh, I tweeted it out. I'm excited, but the question is, what are they gonna do with Samantha? Because Kim Cattrall hates everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, she hates all the everybody mm -hmm. on that show. She's mm -hmm. never gonna come back. Mm -hmm. So what would you do? Let me, I'm gonna do what I did to my friends on the radio show. No, 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 here's your new job. You are the head writer of the new Sex of the City show. How do you deal with Samantha Go? Uh, You're fired. Mm. Uh, what, here's what I would do. <laughs> I would- Please, please, just take over from if, here. If you're going to, if you're gonna, do, if you're gonna handle her, yeah. you kill her off. And you kill her off and you have the funeral as the opening scene. Okay, was that really cold or was it just me? No, like, you kill I mean, her off. Just, just she like, doesn't want anything. Kill her. If Kim Cattrall and the character of Samantha's never gonna come back, you kill her off. Because look, in your 50s and 60s, if the show was reflective of, how we, of women's lives in different decades, mm -hmm. loss is part of the 50s and 60s. So you make, so the loss of a friend is very realistic. So you open up the show with the funeral, you deal with that, and then you get on with the business of moving the story forward. If you're gonna recast her, Sharon Stone, I rest my case. Can you really recast her though? I mean, honestly, can you? Days of our lives have had five Jennifers. Okay, but that's days of our lives. It's Dallas has had two Miss Ellie's, which was that's a huge Dallas. mistake. That's Dallas. But Again, I'm just saying, different. you could recast her. Everybody's replaceable. I fully this disagree. This show could be called Stan tomorrow. I fully disagree on both counts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can recast her. I mean, part of it was just the, the even though she hates everyone, the friendship? Yeah. It was the whole chemistry between everybody and the sass and the characters. And you're just going to throw someone else in for this like new thing happening a few decades later? Now. Okay, then what are you going to do, head writer? Um, you just I say she's say, on a trip? No, she's just gone. You just ignore it. She's gone. Mm, I think that's disrespectful to the she, fans. Ted thinks she's in a coma. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Ted has never watched a mo. What? Is it, uh, she's coming into the Jason show. What is she? They're screaming in the studio. I thought it was engineer Brad. He's building a house next door. Get over here, Kendall. Get over, they can't hear you, Alex. What? I was very excited about that. Oh, separate, oh, separate, that's right. Okay, go to that camera, that's right. Okay, uh, is her mic on now? No, you're not. You can't, you shouldn't replace her? No, absolutely not. Okay, get out. There she, we're no. done, we're done. Yes. <laughs> I will say Kendall, Alex Kendall, is the biggest Sex in the City fan in this building. Yes. Uh, so I take her, I take, that's not your camera, Alex, it's, it's that this one. one. It's this one. Look at, yes I am. Oh, oh my goodness, <laughs> she can't even, Alex, Alex, Alex can
cannot reach the camera. <laughs> Try it again, Alex. See if you can, if your head can get the camera. This one. Right there. No, you can't do it. Okay. Oh, my goodness. There's, there, Alex. Now you're in the shot. Oh, my goodness. I was dying. This is the first time we've been on the uh, yeah, uh, show six years. Only the second time Alex has been on the show. And she's been next door like the Roper since we've been here. She just breached this place I, like I know. nobody's business. Good gravy. <laughs> Tyler, keep her out. What do we pay him for? Exactly. He's sitting there playing Yahtzee. We have a lot more to come, everybody. We'll be right back. Stay with us. <laughs> more hot dishes coming out of the oven. Next, don't mess with Gail King. The 20-something who accused a black teen of stealing her phone tries to be sassy with Gail King in a new interview, and well, you know how that went. Then, it's the hottest food trend of the new year, charcuterie boards. But how do you make a great one? Our friends from Red Rabbit will show you. And you are showing us your weekend, so get ready to smile, because that is all coming up. So how long has it been? When's the last time you went back to Appalachia? It's been years. Take me home. Come to A lot of old ghosts. This isn't Buffalo territory anymore, Starling. We do evidence. Not it's a full moon and I've got a feeling. So you'll keep quiet until I tell you. And then you will say what I tell you. DC is living in fear. I don't like this. This is deep and dark, Clarice. This is getting worse. It always gets worse. I know you have your own demons to carry, but you're the only one who can help. Welcome back. This is a clip from the Silence of the Lambs spinoff, Clarice. The series will debut on CBS next month. The two minute long trailer uh, debuted on 60 Minutes last night. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of the series. I read the Thomas Harris books. Um, Silence of the Lambs is one of my favorite uh, movies of all time. I even like Hannibal. The show Hannibal, I think, is one of the more underrated dramas on network TV of the past decade. So I'll say that. I'm excited for this. This looks dark. It looks like it doesn't belong on network TV. That excites me. And it has, it's so convoluted. I'm not going to bore you with it, but it's the rights to these characters. This is what I find fascinating. They're never going to be able to say the words Hannibal Lecter. Really? Because the people that own the rights to those characters don't own the rights to Thomas Harris's other characters like Hannibal, which is so ridiculous. Interesting. Yeah. But well, this takes place a year after Silence of the Lambs. That's what I was going to ask you. And I, I, what I'm a little worried about, is it going to be more like a big sky? Or is it going to be like CSI? I, I think mean, it's going to be we're... a darker CSI, a grittier. Okay. Not so, you know, all of those CBS procedurals all kind of look the same. Right. You know what I mean? They're lit the same. They have, I think this is going to be grittier. And they need to do this. Network TV needs to compete with cable, whether mm -hmm. you, you know, you like it or not. <laughs> Next in the dish, huh. have you seen the CBS This Morning interview with Maya Ponsetto? She's the woman who tackled a 14-year-old black teenager and accused him of taking her iPhone in a New York City hotel lobby. Um, he didn't. Hello, the phone was in the in her car in an Uber. Well, Gail King pressed her on why she did what she did. And let's just say she didn't help her cause. Look. I'm a 22 year old girl. I am, I, I don't, I, racism uh, is, I said, I, how is one girl accusing a guy about a phone a crime? Where is the context in that? Mia, what is the Mia, deeper, what is the deeper, Mia, what is the deeper story Mia, it's here? it's not, it's, it, that's not the problem. You have to at least understand your actions that day. You seem to have attacked this little boy, this young boy, this, this teenager. You seem to have attacked this teenager about the phone. And then it turned out he didn't even have your phone. That's the thing. I mean, you're, you're, you're saying, look, I'm 22 years old. You're 22 years old, but you are old enough to know better. So I will say you're 22. I get it. Enough. The hotel did have my phone. The hotel did end up having my phone. I did return um, the belongings returned to me. I can't. I can't. Gail, enough. Um, no. With the smirk. That's not how you behave. First of all, the hotel didn't have her phone. 
Uh, from what I understand, the phone was in the, was in an Uber. Number two, uh, you are an entitled brat, and it comes across in that interview, and you're not helping your case. Did you see the lawyer? The lawyer's like, oh, she's like, why can't I have any other client? <laughs> um, and then part two of the interview aired this morning, and it didn't get any better for her. And part two of the interview, she's like, I, and I'm paraphrasing, she goes, well, I'm Puerto Rican and uh, blah, 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 and so I can't be racist. And Gail goes, yes, you can. Yes, you can. What? Yes. That's like the, the big, the other one that likes to get thrown around a lot with, well, I have daughters, so there's no way that I would ever demean a woman. Yeah. Like there's all, it's, it's always the, well, I'm this, so I can't think that way. Yes. Yeah, Roll and, the tape. There's such a sense of entitlement. And again, you're sitting there, you know, that's why lawyers, you know, with your daddy hat and your Daisy Duke. Oh my gosh. Whatever, the daddy I don't know what hat. she was wearing. I don't know, it's like half a shirt. And you're trying to make your case. And look, and if you're thinking, Jason, why are you, why are you focusing on the physical? It's for the very same reason when you go into a courtroom, lawyers have you dress a certain way because you're mm -hmm. trying to appeal to the, to, to the, uh, the jury. Well, this is the jury of public opinion. Right. And you're sitting there with your daddy hat. It's and respect. you're being a brat. Yeah. You're being an absolute brat. Just be respectful. Like you show up to a job interview. Like you do anything where you're just going to show respect when you wear something to church. It's just ridiculous. Ridiculous. Gail, she has the patience because I would have been like, bloop. You know, on Mondays, <laughs> we get a special serving of hot dish all the way from Hollywood. Please give it up for our good friend, Brad from TMZ. Good morning, Brad. Hey, good morning, Jason. How are you? I'm doing well. What's, uh, what's the latest? You just heard me go off on her. What's the latest on Mia? Well, there is a push for justice, that's for sure, because it was kind of a whirlwind uh, last couple days for Mia. She was arrested here in Los Angeles, Jason, and actually extradited to New York City. There were some officers, some detectives, I should say, who came out and escorted her. Uh, when she got to New York, she answered to charges. There's two, two counts of attempted assault, attempted robbery, grand larceny, and endangering the welfare of a child. Now, the video you see there is once she landed back here in Los Angeles, there were several photographers there. She's still, of course, sporting that daddy hat. Uh, she didn't have a whole lot to say other than asking the photographers to get out of her way, but uh, you know what they say about karma, and it uh, certainly appears to be catching up with her. Yeah, I couldn't believe another point in that interview, Brad, when she goes, well, we're basic, I'm paraphrasing, we're basically the same age. No, you're not. You are 22, <laughs> and he's 14. I know, and, and you know what? After she was arrested, Jason, we got a statement from her attorney who said, you know, I, I, I've tried everything I can. She's not taking my advice. She believes that she needs help, and, uh, and that's about all that, that you really have to read into that. Unbelievable, but believable. What's, uh, hey, what's the latest on Dr. Dre's condition? Well, he is still hospitalized. So it was last, it was a week ago today, actually, he was uh, sent to an L.A. hospital uh, for a brain aneurysm, and they continue to do tests on him. Uh, he is in the ICU, uh, but he's responsive. They just want to figure out what caused the bleed. Uh, they don't think that this is headed to another serious issue in the future. Obviously, if they can figure out what caused this, but nonetheless, a scary and very fortunate situation uh, that Dr. Dre is still alive. Absolutely. And finally, something lighter to end with, uh, whether they're parents watching or millennials that grew up with it. We have Pokemon news, something I've never said on the show. Uh, a first edition set is making news. Why? Of the cards. Well, this is really incredible. So these cards have really seen a resurgence in their value over the last few years as kind of the sports collector industry is also hyping up. Uh, but there is a set of 103 uh, perfect condition of the first edition 1999 Pokemon cards. And it's going up for auction on the 11th. They're expecting this thing could get three quarters of a million dollars. What? Now, if, if you've kind of followed this, there's one card in there that can get anywhere from 150 to 250,000 on its own. Uh, so that's a Charizard card. So if, uh, if this whole set is in perfect condition, I can see it hitting that mark. Brad, um, I love you even more, the fact that you read that last sentence with a straight face. That was, <laughs> I was a big Pokemon I, kid. I could see. That's uh, that's a story. Uh-huh. I don't even, like yeah. the last couple words you said, I don't know. I don't know what you said. Yeah. <laughs> hey, those who know will know. <laughs> Absolutely. Brad, have a good week. I appreciate it. Thanks, Jason. Thank you. TMZ.com for more or TMZ on TV. Going back to Mia Maya.
Uh, is it Mia? I want to pronounce her name right, all kidding aside. Mia? Mia. That's just, you know what, you just weren't, um, as we say, you weren't raised right. Because mm -mm. if I mean, my mother would, I mean, let me be very honest. She's watching. No. My mother always said this, and I've said it on, on the show a lot. She never wanted adults to dread my presence. Mm -hmm. You know, so I was raised, uh, you know, I, I'm an only child. I'm spoiled in some ways. My mom was really big on manners. And when I see stuff like that, it infuriates me. It infuri mm -hmm. I don't care how guilty or innocent you are to treat somebody like that, an adult. No, uh-uh. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I would have been grounded from Dallas for a year. Oh, from Dallas? <laughs> oh, that's how my mom punished me. <laughs> You know, you Sorry. punish with what you take away from yeah. the kid, what means something to them. Right. I had a party at my house that my mom didn't know about. <gasps> I only threw one of those. I threw a party at my mom's house uh, with like 30 high school kids. It's Stop. The, only, the only party I ever threw. She said that she was going to be spending the night with my dad at a hotel for a weekend. Um, she went. I had 30 friends over. She called me and said, um, I'm coming home. I don't feel good about this. And I kicked everybody out. I'm dumb. Uh, my dad's boss lived across the street and called my mom's hotel to say that there were like 40 cars in my yard. So I came home that night and she's leaning against the wall when I came home from school. And I'm so dumb and naive. I go, hi. And she goes, you thought you were slick, didn't you? And I went, what? She, she goes, just, don't make it worse by lying. And I go, what? She goes, bah, bah, bah. And she goes, you're grounded from Dallas for two weeks. One of those weeks, the season finale. <sighs> Mama. She didn't get mom of the year that week. I oh. just was not happy. Oh. But I secretly recorded it. <laughs> Don't tell her. <laughs> Next. Yeah, I recorded. That's what VHSs were for. VCRs yeah. or whatever they were. Yeah. <laughs> Next in the dish. Someone associated with our show is getting a whole lot richer this morning. Dax Holt was on Shark Tank Friday night. He was pitching his trophy business. But before we tell you how it turned out, take a look at this. With this bad boy in your shoulder. So it's super simple. You go to our website, you choose your sport, then your size, and your color. There are literally thousands of trophy combinations to choose from to create your very own dream trophy. So we understand how important winning is here inside the tank. So we went ahead and we custom designed trophies for each one of you sharks. Wow. So go ahead and unveil the greatness next to you. Wow, I like mine a golden wow. slipper. A bull and bear. Stock market, baby. Wall Street. I actually like the one I already have that's in my office. <laughs> Whatever, Cuban. Dax and his business partner were seeking a $600,000 investment from the Sharks to help their business. But their pitch, uh, but was their pitch good enough to get the backing of a Shark? And in particular, Mark Cuban? Look. Are you here just for Cuban? I think so. No, we are not. What do you want to do, Mark? What is Mark doing? So guys, I mean, I like what you're doing. I like the fact that you're hustlers, right? And you're looking to touch all the pieces and you're just following the money. The question is 8% isn't enough. I'll make you an offer. I'll offer you the $600,000, but I want 17%. Appreciate the offer. Thank you very and it's, much. And it's either a yes or no. No, I'm, I'm going to make you an offer. There you go. Then I'm out. Oh! Whoa. Unless you want to say yeah. yes, you so know. So I'll tell you my so offer. It's, it's, it's your decision, right? It, I'll tell you my offer. Let's take a deal. deal. Done. Let's go. Deal. All right, all right. There we go. The end of the show. They didn't hear any other offers, so I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I can. Dax Holt is in business with Mark Cuban. <laughs> you think he'll still come on the show? No, he already canceled on it. He's done. <laughs> He's done. <laughs> I think we do. We get the email. He's, he's too big for us now. <laughs> he goes, "Who are you?" If, if we had time, I'd call him right now just to make sure he's not going to be too big for us. But yeah, congratulations, buddy. I knew it. I, the minute he told me that idea, I was like, "Yep, that's good a, a good, a good. <laughs> what's up? A that's good a good one. original idea." <laughs> Still ahead, we're talking about one of the most popular shows right now. <laughs> but coming up next, need to impress your friends? We're talking about making one of the best. Charcuterie boards. How do you do it? You'll find out when we come back. Back in a moment. Mark Cuban and Dak Holt. Welcome back, everybody. 
They're one of the hottest trends in the food world, and I know you hear that all the time, but this is for real. Popping up all over Instagram and TikTok. Charcuterie boards are a great way to display and enjoy some delicious appetizers, but how do you know what to do? Like, how do you know how to create them? Joining us live with some Charcuterie 101 is the executive chef from one of my favorite places, Red Rabbit, Travis Langley. Hello, my friend. Hi there, thanks for having me. No, thanks for being here. And let me uh, start, uh, I usually do this with celebrities, but you're a food celebrity. I will start with you. <laughs> uh, Red Rabbit, even before it became popular, you guys have single-handedly one of the best charcuterie boards in the city. Put a period, take the check to the bank. It's fantastic. So first, congratulations on that. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Appreciate that. Now, but for people making it home, they're watching. Really, Travis, what is a charcuterie board? What, what should you have on a good one? So a charcuterie board is just a variety of different cured meats, cheeses, and then some accoutrements to go along with that. Um, my goal is to always have a nice variety of flavors, textures, um, and when it's all said and done, I want it to look pretty cool. I was going to say, is there a trick to the, the, the placement? And you're going to walk us through it. Is there a trick to yeah. the placement of the items? Yeah, so I always start with my cheeses. And I try to, uh, you know, really spread those out first and then build around those. Because um, um, on our board, we use five different cheeses. Um, so um, spreading those out, working on color. Um, I like to kind of tear them and stack them, you know, because otherwise it's just a flat board. Um, with cheese on it. So um, this one I started out with some pecorino. Um, and then here we have a blue cheese. So you notice I'm really trying to mix the colors and not put all the similar cheeses right next to each other. Um, and there again, we'll just kind of break them up, pile them up. Um, I'll serve it with a knife. That way people can, you know, cut it smaller if they want it. Um, so that's our gorgonzola dulce. Um, this is a Welsh cheddar, nice and sharp. Um, I, a little bit of aged flavor to it. Go ahead, Travis. Yeah, while you're while you're placing the cheese, let me ask you just a, to, uh, a, a general question because I think just like wine, I say this a lot. I think people are intimidated when they walk into a place to buy cheese, especially if they don't do this a lot. What is a go-to? You're the professional. What is a go-to mixture of cheese that anybody watching could do and not feel like oh, uh, you know, goofy going in and asking for it? Yeah. So. A brie cheese. Um, I like a double creme or a triple creme, and that just is the, the, the creamier the brie cheese, the more spreadable it is. Um, so brie's are great. Um, it's always nice to have some kind of a blue cheese on there. Um, I like mm. the gorgonzola because it's really friendly. It's not too pungent um, or insulting to anybody from a flavor standpoint. Um, and then something something hard like uh, this is a manchego or a parmesan. Um, if you kind of get in those ranges and then mix in like a cheddar or a Havarti or something that everybody's familiar with. Um, and then I always like to have uh, a goat cheese on there. This is uh, just a creamy um, chevre. Um, this one I just made a little ball out of. It's really cool because I'll just kind of can make a little divot in there. And then we have a little bit of honey because the honey goes really nice with that sweetness. So, um, so, so you have the cheese. your go-tos. So you have the, the cheese, and now to add a little texture, what else, what else should you add to a grade A board? Okay, so um, a few different salamis or cured meats. So prosciutto, um, prosciutto is really tender and buttery. Make sure it's sliced very thin. Okay. I recommend just buying it already sliced. Um, that's gonna go really good with your saltier cheeses. So I'm gonna put that mm. kind of right next to the manchego, um, along with the cheddar. It's gonna go really well with those. Um, and I just fold it and stack it. Um, again, gives it a little bit of height. Um, and then I have just a basic Genoa salami. Okay. Um, this is kind of tangy, um, not real spicy. Um, so that's going to want to go with something that doesn't cover up the flavor too much. This uh, pecorino cheese over here is going to go great with that. Um, and notice I've just folded them different ways. Um, this one I can kind of stack up and almost make it look like a flower on this corner of the board. Um, real, it's just folded into little triangles like that. Um, and then this is a Toscana salami. This is a lot spicier. Okay. Um, this is going to go really well with um, the, 
the goat cheese, something that can handle that flavor or the sharp cheddar as well. So and then, we're going to work that one into this corner. And then we're taking some look, uh, look at some of yours that you've done at, at Red Rabbit. Nuts and chocolate, always a good addition. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. These are uh, candied walnuts. And those we're just going to kind of fit in. You know, I just say kind of get in where you fit in, you know, work those around the place <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> and then spreads. Um, what, what should we do for spreads, Travis? Yep. Um, so I like a whole grain mustard. Uh, mustards go really well with most of these cheeses and all of the salamis. Um, so you can always just kind of dollop a little mustard. Um, this is a sour cherry spread. That's going to go amazing with like a blue cheese or a brie cheese. So you're going to want to put that kind of close to that or even touching it a little bit. Um, that will really, uh, that'll tell people that, hey, those go together, you know, and that's a good goal. And bottom line, whether you, you just want to find a good balance, balance of the food and balance of the color. So, I mean, we eat with our eyes. So, you, right, am I right on that as far as balance? 100%, 100%. Yeah, just um, make it look fun, make it look colorful. And that way when people come in, I mean, also encourage them to say, guys, eat it. The worst thing is, is you can make something really pretty and you put a lot of work into it. People are like, well, I don't want to wreck it. It's like, I made it there. It's there for you to wreck. Yeah, that is, I have no problem with that. And finally, we have just a few seconds. Where can people get a board at, Travis? I mean, because this is, it is the hot thing at every, well, we don't have parties anymore, but when we do have parties again, where can people find a board? Man, you can find them anywhere from Target, Home Goods. Um, there's your Williams Sonoma, tons of different home stores. And the good thing is, is we can all still go shopping. <laughs> yeah, totally. And, and today is the day that um, restaurants are reopening. Uh, are you guys reopening today, my friend? So we're actually reopening tomorrow. We're open Tuesday through Sunday. Um, uh, all of our, or both of our Red Rabbit locations, as well as our Red Cow locations, too. Perfect. Support local, everybody. Uh, they're, they're great homegrown restaurant group, Red Rabbit and Red Cow as well. Travis, thank you for being here. I appreciate it, Chef. Yeah, thank you. Cheers. Cheers. As the chef said, all six locations of Red Rabbit and Red Cow uh, will be open. Well, Red Rabbit will be open tomorrow, but you can get takeout from both of them as well. Head to redrabbitmn.com for more information. They make takeout very easy. I might have had some on Friday, but you didn't hear that from me. Still ahead, we're talking about Netflix's Bridgerton. Am I liking it as much as a lot of you? You're going to find out, and Kendall and I may fight a little bit, but that's okay. We'll be right back. Most enchanting indeed. Every presumptuous mother in town will leave me alone, and every suitor will be looking at you. <laughs> Stare into my eyes. If this is to work, you must appear madly in love. The Duke truly has put your head in a spin. Is it awful that I'm enjoying it? Welcome back. It's one of the currently one of the most talked about news shows. Kind of a combination of Gossip Girl and Downton Abbey. Bridgerton is streaming now on Netflix. Welcome back. It's the first show on Netflix from Shonda Rhimes, the producer behind Grey's Anatomy and Scandal. And I started watching it this weekend. Now, let me give you a little bit of a setup, and then Kendall and I will argue about it. Uh, 1813 London, a young, a young debutante mm -hmm. from a family. Everyone's trying to find a suitor, okay? Uh, and the Duke. Uh, is matched up. Well, I don't want to give too much away, but the Duke comes into town matched up with her from the Bridgerton family, and it causes a ruckus. Now, above everything is a gossip columnist who is writing uh, an article and kind of narrates the whole thing and wait to see who the narrator is. <laughs> Great cast, diverse cast, modern music, but played like in period instruments, and it's based on a series of books. There we go. There's your blanket very general synopsis. Mm -hmm. I am on episode two. I finished it. I finished episode two on Saturday. I capital L like it. I am in no way capital L loving it. What mm -hmm. am I missing? Everybody, Cody, Matt from uh, our weather department, mm -hmm. passed out. So excited <laughs> about this show and heard that I didn't quite love it. Yes. You love it. I do. I'm on the love it end. Uh, when I first saw the previews for it, I was interested, but not 
like, oh, well, we'll wait for it. See, me too. Then a lot of folks really were liking it, and I was like, okay. So I watched that first episode. I loved it. I think it's a good way to describe it with the Gossip Girl blend of Downton Abbey. However, maybe not so Downton Abbey, maybe more Pride and Prejudice. Um, there's a lot of class and hierarchy Ooh. things that kind of start to play into it that even if you don't understand how the upper crust British system works, like I don't really, you can still follow along very easily. There's a lot of chemistry, I think, between the cast. I think it's easy enough to follow. And I love the set. I love the costumes. I just thought it was really entertaining. I, I love it. And my sisters and my mom, we all loves it. I hear there's a lot of sex. There is, as it goes on. Just Truly. breaking it down. Yeah, 2021 no. is my year. I, I, I'm just going <laughs> to say what I'm going to say. Yeah. And if I get emails, meh. I hear there's a lot of nookie. I mean, there are some long periods of like, you see the full experience. <laughs> full thing. I had to shut the curtains. The full road trip. I was watching it at night by myself in like, you know, in a normal house where you can see the TV from the street. And I was like, oh girl, got to shut the curtains. Yeah. Uh, somebody, and I won't say their name, executive producer Jeff said, there's a lot of bums. You see bums. Yeah, a lot of bums. You see a bum. Mm-hmm, and a lot of bubs. Yeah. You see some bubbies, too. Got it. Oh. Bums and bubbies. <laughs> great. <laughs> Wonderful. That's but interesting. But I really great. like it. I mean, I love the chemistry between the two leads. I really do. And then there's just funny, other interesting storylines. And like you said, the diverse cast. Okay. It's circa, uh, sort of like Cinderella back in the day with Brandy. How there's this diverse cast and color and you um, color costumes and just so much like to see on the screen. Okay, visually it's beautiful. interesting. Yeah, it's beautiful. I'm not gonna give up on it in any way. I just wish I'm gonna keep going. Jeff is Jeff is my north star with with entertainment. I trust him. Okay. I'm nice to him now in like three minutes I won't be, but mm -hmm. Jeff is my north star and he said, give it time. Mm -hmm. He knows me well. I'm going to keep watching because I, you know, I love shows like this. Yes. I think we all are looking for this type of escapism. Mm -hmm. That's why I think they should reboot Knott's Landing. But anyway, we're looking for these soapy dramas. Right. Because let's be clear, the world is horrible right now and right. we want to escape. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll escape here. Oh, I will say if you're watching it and you're halfway through and you're like, where do we go from here? That's all I'll say. It does keep going. So okay. keep watching it. Good warning. Still ahead. We're talking about the weekend with you when we come back. Back in a moment. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going. Let's make it a good day. Becky. Hi, Becky. Oh, yeah. checking with. Oh, and there's Emily. Emily's back too. She's 30 today. Happy birthday, Emily. 30 years old. I remember 30. Yeah. Oh, whatever. Of course you remember 30. It was like four days ago. It's right now. Yeah. yeah. Welcome back. Besides starting Bridgerton this weekend, I also managed to take down all of my Christmas decorations. Yeah. That was, I was like a Tasmanian devil going through. I was like, <laughs> ma, 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 ma. Anyway, yesterday on our Facebook page, I asked all of you to show us your weekend. And we had some great responses. Look. The weather didn't stop many of you from getting outside this weekend. First up, Kelly says they plowed an ice skating track in front of her house. That looks like fun. They weren't the only ones skating. Carrie shared this picture of cousins learning to skate and looks like they're making some pretty good progress. Quite a few people went snowshoeing this weekend. I still have never done that, including Judy and some of her friends. Belinda was also out working her snowshoes. You go, Belinda. Angela and her friends took an adult field trip to Sparta, Wisconsin, going snow tubing, snowshoeing, and petting some llamas. There's a combo platter. It was also a great weekend to relax outside. Kathy, hi Kathy, shared this picture, enjoying some outdoor breakfast with what she calls her good and crazy friends. I have a few of those. She says it actually wasn't too bad. And Jenny thought it was the perfect weekend for coffee on the deck. From the outdoors to staying in, Amy said her 17-year-old set out to bake some bread and she succeeded. Nice work. Cheryl spent some time working on her latest cross-stitch pattern. She says, this one is for me. Oh, how sweet are you? Nancy was also letting her creative juices flow, creating these custom cards. Beautiful. 
It was a birthday weekend for Nicole's daughter. She turned six. Happy birthday, sweetie. And another Nicole celebrated her nephew's seventh birthday. Check out that Pokemon cake. What would the weekend be without our pets? Mm -hmm. Jody's dog Fiona turned one and got to meet Jody's son's cat, Marshmallow, even giving him a little hug. Kristen picked up a foster puppy named Huey. Love that name. He's looking for a forever home. And Amy Joe's family adopted a new dog. Congratulations. And finally, what could be the cutest thing you see today? Catherine shared video of her twin. <laughs> She says her family is blessed with a home filled with giggles. Yes, love it. Kendall joins you now. So cute. Okay, and uh, let's check in with the. Let's check in with. Uh, oh, do we have it? Before we do that, though, I have one more picture that I forgot to share. This is from my sister-in-law Tammy. This is my family. <laughs> This is how my family spent Saturdays in the parking lot with the fire. Uh, no, this is after ice fishing. Remember, the, Kendall, they wanted me to go ice fishing? Yes. And this was supposed to endear me to this process. I go, you're dirty, you're kneeling in dirt, you're cold, and you're, you're cooking food that I can't identify. No, no thank you. Let's go to the audience. Emily, happy birthday, sweetie. Happy 30th. Thank you. Did you did you celebrate in a very pandemic safety way this weekend? Um, we have no. I mean, <laughs> we didn't really celebrate yet. My husband and I are going to go to a cabin in Lutzen over this upcoming weekend. Oh, nice! Have a good time, Becky. Yeah, how was your weekend, sweetie? Board. Good. We went to meet Ralph on once a meet. Oh, okay. Now, Becky, you know how to get to my heart. I love a good meet raffle. Do you play, Becky? Do you play pull tabs? Yes. Oh, Attic. Okay. See, these are my people. I love you, Becky. Thanks, guys. Thank you, ladies. And thanks to all of you for showing us your weekend. We're going to take a break and we'll be back right after this. Stay with us. That was great. So, so good. Welcome back, everyone. Hey, you heard me say that about Red Rabbit and Red Cow. You know, uh, I'm sure you guys know the restaurants reopen today, most of them. So, uh, hey, today, you know, get some takeout. Let's give uh, restaurants a nice influx of business today. Mm -hmm. Go see them. If you haven't been to a local place, go in and see them. It, it really does help. It really does. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I plan on doing that today. Plus, so. you don't have to cook. That's right. There is that advantage, too. Hey, <laughs> if you miss our show live, and we hate when you do, but, you know, we understand. You can always catch us on YouTube a little bit later. Just search for The Jason Show on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. We appreciate it. And uh, we load up all of our new episodes every day. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back to wrap things up today, right after this. Bubblegum goodbye. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you so much for making us a part of your day. We really do appreciate it. Let's, uh, we appreciate them, too. Let's check in with our audience and say goodbye. One more sign. Goodness gracious. She has like a Kinko's there. Okay, hello, Mrs. Noel and Mrs. Steele's chemistry class. The Patrick Henry Patriots. <laughs> well, both Emily and Becky, thank you both ladies for being here today. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. You're the best. No, you guys are. I really do. Your support means a lot to me, so I appreciate it. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> it is time for the bubblegum goodbye. Are you ready there? This I'm is... never ready, but the... yes, I'm yep. ready. These are questions right over there. Jeff doesn't tell us what these questions are. We read them live on the air. Here we go, Kendall. <laughs> what job would you be terrible at? Um, I would be really bad. Oh, I would be really bad working at like a humane society. I would take all the dogs home. Okay, that's a good one. Thank you. That um, was hard. That was, I get anxiety over this. What about you? I know. I love this. That's why I love watching you get anxiety over it. What job would I be terrible at? This? No. <laughs> um, a salesperson. You're right. I would be bad at that as I well. don't like being pushy, mm -mm. like trying to make the sale of like, hey, I'm going to throw in a boat or, you know. I could yeah. never do the, uh, I point upstairs, that's where the upstairs people are. Yeah. They make the deals and sell the commercials to like Burger King. Yeah. Could never do that. I don't like being pushy. I don't like, I don't want to bother people. That is a good one. I think I'd be bad at it too. Uh, horrible. We're good at talking, but not like, yeah, I don't are you want, sure you don't want more? Yeah, I don't want to okay, talk right. to, I don't want to <laughs> sell them anything. Tomorrow on the show, Ted gives his recap of week two of The Bachelor. 
Does he like it as much? He really liked it last week. We'll see. And I want to try to get him to watch Bridgerton. Can you imagine Ted watching Bridgerton? No. Oh, God. That, see, that's a segment right there. Yeah, just it's get ve- a camera on him. <laughs> very unlike Ted. But then very. he watches The Bachelor, though. So anyway, anyway, that's coming up tomorrow. But right now, if you are watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody, nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a good afternoon.